This is Twit. Last week we talked about the new AMD 6 and 8 core parts. This week is the second half where we talk about the Ryzen 9 9900X and the Ryzen 9 9950X, or the 12 core and 16 core parts respectively. The Ryzen 9 CPUs are geared for server loads, database work, simulation programs such as chemical or fluid, uh, content creators, you know, things like running Blender or doing large video projects, you know. They can play games, but that's not what they really excel at. So I, you're going to hear that a few times in here. So anybody thinking, well, I really want to use this for gaming, that's not where you want to go. They, you know, the, these chips do a lot better with high CPU loads, you know, things that can really take advantage of the 12 and 16 cores in parallel. You know, and honestly, if you want to play games and that's your main thing, the 7800X3D is still the the king of the heap you know now when is the 9000 series x3d parts coming i don't know i've heard september but that was a rumor and i i haven't seen it substantiated past past that so it may or may not happen but games wait for the extra cash now the ryzen 9 9900x is a 12 core 24 thread part that features a 4.4 gigahertz base clock and a blue boost clock up to 5.6 gigahertz the 9900x also has a 120 watt default tdp and 64 megabytes l3 cache and it's priced at about well, currently it's going to be released price of 499 us dollars the ryzen 9 9950x is a 16 core 32 thread you know, flagship processor that has a 4.3 base clock with a maximum boost clock up to 5.7 gigahertz. The Ryzen 9 9950X has a 170 watt default TDP and a 64 megabyte L3 cache, and it's priced at $649. So now Michael Larable over at Phronix has done his run of 400 benchmarks again on these CPUs, and run a lot of older Ryzen chips and lots of Intel chips. This is what he did with the last one that we talked about last week. But he does mention that he removed some of the lower end CPUs so the charts would be a little more readable. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you have real low end hardware, sometimes the scale really has to scrunch down to make everything fit. So he just cut off some of the bottom tail so that we can focus better on the actual uh, results. Now, the hardware and software setup was the same as it was for the last week's test, Ubuntu 2404 LTS with Linux 610 kernel, GCC 13.2 as, as the default compiler. All motherboards were using their latest BIOS. Uh, always, they all run the two terabyte Corsair MP700 NVMe SSD. Uh, the graphics was Radeon RX 7900 GRE GPU. The DDR5 compatible chips were using two 16 gigabyte DDR5 or two 16 gigabyte DDR5 DIMMs running at 6,000 speed while the the older like the Ryzen 5000 series was using two 16 gigabyte DIMMs of DDR4 at 3600. Now keep in mind those speeds are where you have unity with the memory clock so that's the best speed you're going to get if you go faster than that then your clock your memory clock is not keeping up and you're waiting cycles for things to sync up again so for the for the later processors it's 6000 for the older processors it's 3600 now as i always say on these large benchmark runs take a look at the article in the show notes if you have a specific workload that you care about you know these chips might be worth investing investing in but it's going to be situational Looking at the overall mean, the geometric mean, which takes out some of the flyers, we've gone over that in the past, the 9950X came out to being 17.8% faster than the Ryzen 9 7950X. So that's a pretty good improvement. The 9900X was 21.5% faster than the 7900, and the 99... 9950X was 33% faster than the Intel Core i9-14900K, and even the 9900X was 18% faster than the Core i9-14900K. Now, for those still on AM4, the 9950X was delivering 1.87 times the performance of the Ryzen 9 5950X processor. So, it's, it's edging up on... Uh, 
double the speed there. Not quite, but you know, big, big improvement from the 5000 series. So I'm going to add my own information here. But if you look at a lot of the online reviews in Windows, they tend to focus a lot on gaming. And those benchmarks are not that much of an improvement. It might be the choice for, you know, it, some of it might be the choice for AMD when playing a game through the Windows software, they park some of the cores so they don't get the delay across the NUMA node. So this is, this is the Ryzen 9 chips. Now, this doesn't seem to have paid off much. And while Linux benchmarks come in favorable for the new chips, the Windows ones are rather mediocre. Now, sites like Level 1 Techs, which do both Windows and Linux benchmarking, said the same thing. They feel that Linux was much more prepared for this release, and the speed increase is a lot more in Linux than Windows. So, now, that really kind of says that you have to look at what you're doing to see what you whether this is going to be a, a bump in performance or not. Now, one place that a person really needs to look and see if you want to upgrade is using something that relies heavily on the AVX 512 instructions. The series, the 7000 series of chips had a double pump method of working with these instructions, which is where they break the instructions into two operations because the CPU can't handle the full instruction width. The 9 series, 9000 series doesn't have that and can handle them directly. So if you have AVX 512, work, 512 workloads, they will see a very large speed increase. Now, Intel doesn't support the AVX 512 instructions as they're trying to get people to buy their enterprise, which do support the instructions. So take a look at the article for full details and know they're, you know, they're, they're not really any gaming benchmarks in here because that's not what these chips are for. And universally, everybody agrees. These, these are for, you know, playing games after you do a majority of your workload and you still want to play. Yeah, it'll play. If you, care at all about the performance of games wait for the x3d chips the these these do not fare well i mean they're they're okay but mm -hmm. they're uh they they're, they're not they're, gaming they're, chips. they're workstation chips these yeah. in particular they're really workstation chips now yes it, it are people thinking that there's also going to be a 9000 series threadripper uh they are but I, that, well, it's rumored to be. Right. So, again, it hasn't been substantiated, so I, I can't say that for sure it is, but it's rumored that there will mm -hmm. be. And yeah. and that's kind of where you kind of think of these chips as kind of a poor person's thread ripper. They're stepping know, instead of paying for, yeah. Yeah, instead of paying for the full, you know, say, 50, you know, 128-core yeah. chips, or you go down to the thread ripper chips, which have a lot more PCI bandwidth, things like that, mm -hmm. but they clock slower. These give you a little better clock, less PCIe bandwidth, mm -hmm. you know, and they kind of kind of cross in that straddling yeah. between gaming and home PC use and where you'd use a Threadripper. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting. You have to kind of figure out like what what am I doing with the chip? Do I want to game? Do I want to be able to compile? Am I doing a bunch of multimedia stuff? And then find out where the sweet spot is for you. Yeah, um, it's it, cause, because some of the benchmarks they run slightly faster than the seven thousand series, and even not that much faster than a five thousand. So it's not worth it. But certain ones, like especially AVX five twelve, holy cow! If you care mm -hmm. about that, the, these things blow the old stuff out of the water. Yeah, and, and I want to say there are some things in AVX 512 that, that are really interesting general speed-ups if you compile for it. And uh, AVX 512, is that x86 V4, I think, it has uh, uh, the, the, the 512 stuff in it? I thought it was 3. It's 3 or it's 4. I honestly can't remember which. I don't, I don't know what we're up to now. But one of them has it, and you can actually do some really interesting things like doing your string comparisons using the AVX 512 instructions. And those people are starting to see some very impressive speed ups um, as a result of being able to do that. And so, the, it, you know, once upon a time, AVX 512 and all that was almost considered like toy instructions or, or instructions that nobody on their home computer really cared about. Um, but th they found this found some places where it really makes sense. And so 
I think we might we might hear more about that to come. Uh, <laughs> Intel may get forced to start putting them back into their uh, consumer chips. We'll see. I I, I kind of wait to see if they are going to do that or not. If they're going to kind of knuckle under and say, you know what? Oh, fine, we'll support them. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's gonna it's gonna come down to so AMD is supporting the the AVX five twelve on all of their chips. It's gonna come down to how important people think that is, and really, what it's gonna come down to it, are is Windows going to start um, compiling for those instructions, right? So, like, if people start seeing a big speed increase running AMD chips because it's got AVX five twelve, then Intel, I think, would be forced to. Um, they used to. They they used to support it on their consumer CPUs. They stopped after. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember it was, it was a twelve series or eleven. Yeah, was, I, I forget now. It's, it's the it's the weirdest thing because Intel did support it and AMD didn't, and now they've swapped. And it's I don't know. It's just a weird choice by Intel to to stop supporting a instruction set in their CPU that they brought out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe right. that's why they get tired of having to do that well they didn't want the high end their i9 chips to cut into their uh, xeon server chips hey it's leo laporte i hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv for more visit our website twit.tv or subscribe in your favorite podcast client there's also a link somewhere down there